Uh, good guys. Um, there's, this is the instructions for, for Rob's high ace. So the looms all made up. Uh, computers in program. Got the atom. So we're going to make it work with an atom. Uh, relays and fuses. I've got the lid for the fuse box. Um, yeah, my video, this is, the, this is the instructions for this. Uh, no editing, it's all ad lib. If it's fuzzy, it's fuzzy. This is what you get. We make it work. Uh, I've destroyed, absolutely destroyed my bench doing this. Oh, there's the lid. So, basically, you've got to put the, put the loom on the engine. So, uh, first thing, what I did here is, is I just I just took the edge off of fuel rail. Um, there's two kinds of fuel rail, so I'm hoping you've got this kind. This is the early one. I'm expecting it to be an early motor. So I just took the edges off. Now, the this loom here, I've just tucked in the injector loom. Okay, it runs alongside the engine. Um, you've got, got a couple of choices. Um, I'll show on the other side. So on the other side, I've actually... It will... It would actually tuck on the inside of the fuel rail if you want, which looks really neat and tidy, tucks it away, then, then cable tie it on, that looks really neat, and, and the injector wiring is long enough to come over the outside, that's how I do a lot. Um, so then this side, you can also tuck it on the outside if you want, and, and P-clamp it on the factory mounts, or I actually really like it, to tell you the truth, tuck it down in there, and injector plugs come up. Okay, so I think that looks really quite neat. Um, so that looks, that's how I would, I think that's pretty cool, but up to you. Three different ways, it all fits. Uh, for the wiring coming down the front, uh, so where it comes through, you've, you've normally got a factory bracket on this bolt. If it isn't there, don't stress, either P-clamp it, uh, or if it is there, you'll find the cam sensor will, will can, can go on that. Just be careful of this cam sensor wiring that it doesn't come out and touch the, the top pulley. So that'll sit in nice and then that is designed to, to, to zip tie to that factory bracket. Coil. Tuck the coil wiring in behind the coil and possibly zip tie just onto the bracket. So that's no neat. There's no suppressor, you can chuck that away. Coming down the front. Now I normally go behind the brackets. This one's actually been cut out but behind that with the crank angle sensor wiring and down, again checking that it's not going to touch on the crank sensor. Now over here there's a spare little plug, just just cable tie that. If you, um, I do that so you can actually run a, an oil pressure sensor on some of them. That's sort of a generic loom that I have semi made up and I, I put it all together. So if I'm running a monsoon or a storm or something like that, I will uh, run oil pressure to the computer and use the computer to do the oil light. And that allows me to monitor oil pressure. This one I've set up to have an oil light, so switch. Uh, now that is running to the computer on analog volt, no, digital, digital input one with a pull-up resistor, so you will see if you've got an oil light on there, and I've got a warning buzzer, I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. Now if, I don't know what oil filter housing on it, uh, often on high ace they have remotes under the battery um, area, so if that's the case you'll have to put an extension lead. I didn't cut the little tab off, I normally cut them off, but if you're building extensions, then, then uh, you'll need that. It might have one, an oil filter, I put oil filter blocks up in here, so that's neat and tidy. Um, with the filter coming forward, and then it'll be in the same place as that little fit. So again, make sure all that, and I tuck it in behind, so that's good. So that's that side. Uh, fitting the stepper, so you've got a new stepper set up. Take the, the, the uh, original motor off. I've got a new gasket for you, I happen to have one left in stock. Slide it on. I put the wiring underneath the rail. Don't go over the top. It'll look ugly. And up into there. Um, I've given it some basic numbers in the link, but it will need setting up properly. Okay. Um, hose, factory hose coming in. So that's nice and simple. And you want to plug it in because it's really close to the manifold before you actually do it up. So put the main loom on. Sit it in place. Um, now, Rob tells me that it's got a high ace temp sensor sitting in there. It's kind of silly. The factory one will work, which is tucked in behind there. I'll put a single wire on it. Um, as per what I do, just over here, I've supplied an extra little lead for that one because I know where it's going. 
just to make your life fun. I've supplied a new temperature switch, EFI temp switch uh, sensor. Um, not, not the switch for the gauge. This is the one for the computer. No point putting a new loom on it and putting an old shitty sensor on it. And they fail. And they're getting old and they fall to pieces. So that's in the box well as well. Just while I'm over here, um, if you've got a cold start injector, um, you can blank it off and throw it away. Frost plug to blank the manifold. Cut the bolt down to the suitable length and there's a washer on there. So just cut it down, zip it up and into the fuel roll. Just make sure it doesn't go too far in. So again, um, ejector loom sits on this side nicely. Um, EFI switch, EFI sensors down in here. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, just pull that one out of the way. Undo the coil, pull it out of the way. I've got a long uh, half inch drive socket that I use that won't damage the sensor. Um, they all they get all brittle and yuck. You'll probably find the top just falls off anyway. And then plug it in, put it back together. Now, coil wiring. Um, if you undo the three screws, it'll come out of the way easy. And that'll allow you to go in easy. And there's a bit of extra wiring, so just, just so you can plug it in out here and then tuck it back in, neat and tidy. There's a two pin Deutsch plug in here. Uh, now, that is the temperature sensor. So what I've done, you'll have to imagine that your air box is, a, is, is, is about in my hand. So uh, that's where your TPS is. I've remote mounted mine on the bench because there's no bench over there. Uh, so we've got an igniter. It's, it's going to be a two channel that I'm supplying. So that's coming. TPS wiring hopefully is long enough and I've supplied close to the TPS wiring uh, the switch, uh, the sensor. I thought it'd be nice and easy just to tuck it in. If there's silicon, you can tuck a hole in it. If there's metal in there, so I've supplied a grommet as well. But it's the easiest one to install. That way it won't take you long to install. If you find that when you're tuning it, it does heat soak, which high vans are a little prone to, um, then I've designed it to take like the 3 8 oh no, the 1 8 sensor, just here it is, so I've designed it, you can put this one either in one of those in the steel pipe or into the manifold, I haven't supplied that, but that's a, if you are having trouble with it heat soaking or rob, it doesn't start after it's been sitting because it heat soaks and the air temp goes nuts under the engine bay, because it will be different to down at the throttle body, just a thought, just a hearing, thinking ahead. Okay, uh, so vacuum line, uh, and there will be a map sensor to mount in the out by the throttle body area in that airbox, and the ignition module. So you need to do that as well. On the back of the engine, two earths, one on one side of the head, one on the other side of the head. Is uh, this wire here? Oh, I didn't write on it. It's a bit green wire. I'm going to just go around the other side here. So, so looking at your loom, here's, here's, a, here's a big green wire, and I wrote start on it. So if you need a start circuit to run into the engine bay, there it is. If you want to cut it down, just, just cut it off, shrink it, put another terminal on it. I've put, given you some spare terminals, so that's, that's good to go. Um, auction sensor wiring. So you can tuck it in the standard position if you want. Um, I prefer to put it back in the merge. Uh, I've supplied a new Bosch sensor for you. Um, I can probably chuck in a nut. I'll try and remember to grab a nut for you while we do that. So that way you've, you can put a nut in the exhaust so you, you've got it. Uh, there we go. So that's, for, that's the start. And so what you'll find is coming out from the starter is uh, three wires. The big black wire is the trigger. Cut it appropriately. Stick a terminal on it. Job done. You can put this around here if you want. Um, the loom, I've made it so there's a couple of holes so it can be P-clamped along the back of the engine and then it's going to come out. Now what I do going into the batch box, I cut a hole, get my hole saw out, cut a hole in the back of the batch box, run along the back of the batch box, put a grommet in there, into the, into the pillar, up the pillar and mount the computer up in by the, by the uh, seat belt. The wiring, I've given you a little bit extra length for the power wires going to the fuses and relays and they plug in, you can't get it wrong they're actually even labelled so that's real simple uh, box lid goes on relays uh, fan relay, fuel pump relay ignition relay for the coils and injectors 
and e, the EFI for the computer relay. That does the computer and it does the idle speed control, which also, I know Rob said he doesn't want, doesn't need CAN, but I, I put an OBD2 plug on it, which is handy just if you want to put your scan to on or you're in the middle of nowhere, you get one of those dongles, put them through your phone, play some codes. So real simple. Okay, so next wire. Here's the wires that you've got to work with. Now, important wires, bat, goes to the battery. Uh, I actually clipped the glow plug wire, output wire, which is by the battery box. You'll see it, it's a, normally a big white wire. It's a two pin plug, and that way it's fused off the glow plug circuit. You're not using the glow plug circuit, so that works really, really well. That's simple. The next one you need is you need your fuel pump output. I'll put my lid on the wrong way. Don't put the lid on the wrong way, guys. So if you put the lid on the wrong way, nothing will work. But um, there's your fan output. There's your fuel pump output. So that terminal goes to the fuel pump. Sort that. Um, I've put a big relay on it. Now the fuel pump also does the oxygen sensor power. So there's no power to the oxygen sensor when the engine isn't running. So it won't overheat, cause problems. And so the next one that's really important is this ignition wire. So two places you can get it to it. Either here, it is a red yellow wire and it's labelled ignition, ignition, so power in there, but it, it just it runs through to this fuse box. So if you can't find it out in the engine bay or it's easy to put it in by where the relays, you can just run it, you can just unplug this one, that wire just runs through the loom and, and then straight into that one there. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna power it up and show you what we got here. Uh, relays click on. Computer's going, computer's got a little blue light on it, shows it's going, just powered. Now we've got this little buzzer. I should have left my test light on. So the buzzer, I've programmed the computer, there was a spear output, um, so number four, sorry, output four. And I've done it so if the engine gets over, 80, uh, over 100 degrees, or it loses the oil pressure from the oil pressure switch, the buzzer goes off, like this. That's really annoying, so that'll give you a warning. Mount it in the, mount that in the battery box somewhere. It's powered off the same circuit as the idle speed control and the OBD2 plug. Okay, so going back to the plugs that you need to wire. And these two plugs, so we've got Taco High. So that's a normal coil output, it's linked into number two coil, which is the one on the top of the engine. Um, so that'll run a petrol high ace taco. And then taco low, so that comes from the computer. Um, number auxiliary output one. So if you're running a diesel taco, that'll run, or aftermarket, you can run on that. The check engine light, CEL, check engine light. So if you're running a check engine light, into that one. Simple. Over here we've got H2O water temp. So we've discussed that uh, on the engine. I'd use the factory one because it's neater and tidier. Weld up the hole on the other thing so it can actually be used as a bleeder. Ignition in, so you've got to put the ignition into that. Earth, uh, we know what that is. You know. That. Um, just a note, highest dashes have got an earth that runs to the engine and when guys unplug the looms, they lose that earth and then the temp gauge doesn't work. So you often find lots of funny wiring in that circuit because they couldn't make the temp gauge work because they've unplugged the engine and missed that earth. So that just general earth goes to the black block, black block. And oil runs off the oil pressure switch. So that's all pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure you can handle that. It should stick together pretty easily. Um, I'll write some numbers on this wiring. Um, the tuning cable's coming with the computer. Uh, the loom isn't fragile, but be careful with it. Um, I spent lots of time making it. So no pulling the wires to pull injector plugs off, you know, actually pull the plug. Be sensible with it. Check nothing's gonna rub. Make sure the grommets go through where anything's cut, or any sharp edges. If you wanna put an extra bit of conduit and a bit of tape around it, that's fine. Uh, the tune's pretty straightforward. Everything's labeled. Um, I've done the initial calibration on the TPS here, but you probably should calibrate your own and do the normal setup on the computer as far as the, the TPS, the map sensor will be calibrated. All that other stuff is done, neat, tidy, okay. Um, and 
it should go in and you can go for a drive and, and make things work. So I think that's all the main stuff. If you need to give, if you're unsure about anything, please give me a call. But it should just pretty much drop on, power up, vroom vroom, make the engine go, go out for a tune, go out for a drive. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm going to go through now and just put a bit of, do up the shrink wrap and tidy it all up and double check everything, put it all in the box. I've already done injector tests, coil tests, and everything's working like it should. So I'll go through and put the last few things in the box for you and get it ready to, to get on the courier and get Rob back on the road. Okay, well, I hope that's helpful. Give me a call if you need a hand.